All right, so here's this week's weekly nightfall. It's the birthplace of the vile. I'm doing a solo flawless legend run because I'm still fairly low level. My weapons are all still 1580. So my weapon level, uh, well, I'm on level. And uh, overall with the artifact bot and some of my pinnacles on my gear, um, 1593. So I think I got a little extra damage resistance, but not uh, nothing too dramatic. So I would say overall, doing this at Legend at the beginning of the season when you're a lower level um, is the same, basically the same as doing it on Master towards the back end of the season. Um, there's not a huge difference. Like I think overall on Master... <clears throat> you're you're not doing quite as much damage as you can do at legend because you can over level your weapons like you can have all your weapons at 1590 uh so then if you go and do a 1580 level then your, your weapons are all gonna have a little bit of extra damage but um for master content your weapons are capped at 20 levels under right i'm not too sure if that's how all the the uh all the power levels work for damage and damage resistance I know that there's two different metrics there at least right so I think uh, from what I've understood is your your we your weapons uh, have their own damage output and your overall gear score including your weapons and everything your artifact mod your armor pieces your overall average gear score that's equipped counts towards your damage resistance. I think that's how it works. Some, if somebody knows exactly how it works and can point me to uh, some spreadsheets or some stats or something, I'd love to see it. Uh, but basically, what I'm saying is, you're gonna have roughly the same. Like if you if you go and do this at on master and your overall power is 1610, it's gonna feel very similar to doing this on legend if you're at 1580. The only difference on masters you're going to do a little less damage to the enemies, but you're going to have basically the same damage resistance. So, like the that's that's what makes grandmaster so dramatic. It's not the fact that you're capped at 25 uh, levels under power, but it's the fact that your weapons are like 50 under power. Right? Because if your weapons are 1590 and Grandmasters are 1630 this season, right? You can't get your weapons over 1590. It means your weapons are 50 under power. Is that how it works? Uh, so it means so that, that's that's the big difference with uh, Grandmasters is you um, you feel like you're doing no damage. And then on top of that, you're 25 under power no matter what, so you've got a negative damage resistance stat, basically. So you're taking more damage. Anyway, um, I'm using Night Stalker with your Falcon's Hauberk. As soon as I found out that Bungie was going to put volatile rounds on this thing after coming out of uh, coming out of Invis, I I knew this was going to be insane. Like in my opinion, this. Your Falcons did not need to be touched for PvE. Uh, I don't think it was as fun as this. Like this is this is hella fun. Just this is like Vault around season 16, Void 3.0, like Vault explosions everywhere. Uh, but this is even better because with Hunter you can use Stylish Executioner so that whenever Whenever you kill a void debuff target, which means volatile, weakened, or suppressed, you're going to go invis. And then you just get free volatile rounds every time you're invis. Like as soon as you come out of invisibility, there you go, you got volatile rounds. Apply volatile to the target, kill them, boom, you're invis from Stylish Executioner. It just cycles over and over. So effectively, as long as you're in a fight, you can keep the uptime on vault rounds the whole time, which makes it absolutely nuts. Uh, 
I, from what I understand is that it was it was more of a PvP issue before, like people were just using the 35% damage buff that you would get for five seconds after coming out uh, coming out of invis. Right, that that was the primary thing with with your falcon before was. Once you exit invisibility, you get five seconds of 35% damage. That's it. No volatile rounds, and only five seconds. Um, and then you have to you have to make yourself invis again, right? So, so so it was pretty tricky and because you only had five seconds. You you have it was kind of more of a priority target type. Uh, of exotic or at least that's how I I played with it tactically was because you only got a short window of huge damage you want to prioritize that on single big targets right it's not for ad clear at all so you may have seen I've posted actually quite a few clips towards the back end of last season uh, even on Grandmasters uh, coming out of invis getting that 35 percent damage buff which is a huge damage buff don't get me wrong um but it's not an ad clear damage right like volatile incandescent ignitions like all that stuff volt shot jolt like all that stuff is ad clear damage but uh 35 percent weapon damage buff to all weapons is like lucent blade for swords like you know better than font of might better than high energy fire almost as good as stacking high energy fire and font of might but by the way you can stack font of might with 35 percent damage buff um but yeah so before it was basically just you strategy c come in and in and out of invis on a single target so stylish executioner wasn't really the play before it was a uh, quick fall and vanishing step so that you can uh, just and preferably tier 10 of both strength and mobility so that you can dodge uh, do damage quick fall do damage dodge do damage cycle your quick fall and your dodge on a single target to constant to keep that 35% damage buff going um, but now so now you could still get the 35% damage buff, by the way, which I don't see any point to at all because this, like, obviously volatile rounds are, even though it's completely changed the point of the exotic in PvE, it's, uh, it's way more than most exotics do for anything, really. Uh, so j like, why still have the damage buff? But, um... But what I want to say is that the damage buff doesn't work the same, and you'll see I hardly ever get it. Right? It's so, super situational. So in order to get it now, you don't get it when you come out of invisibility. The only way you can get it is if you're invis, and then you do a finisher. And then right after you do the finisher, then you get five seconds. Um, and I think it eats up some of the clock of while you're doing the finisher. So like by the time you come out of invis, or by the time you're done your finisher, like you got like three seconds left of that 35% damage buff. So what's the point? Like, yeah, I guess if you're if you're really really efficient at using this exotic, you can make use of that with some like crazy burst damage weapons. Uh, but I don't see the point. Like, just get rid of it, or or get rid of volatile rounds and put it back the way it was for PVE. But I don't think they're going to do that because everybody loves this and including myself, the Vault Rounds is fun. I think that was the best part of uh, Season 16 was easy access to Vault Rounds and the uptime on it. Um, and so and so with your Falcons now, you just come out of Invis and you get a whole 9 or 10 seconds. Uh, but that opens up some... That opens up some build potential on Hunter now uh, like it's just a completely different build now you build into ad clear uh, but it, it also does work for doing high damage to targets because because you're applying volatile rounds to bosses and to champions and volatile explosions do a lot of damage like it may even be overall it might be more damage than the 35% weapon damage buff 
because each explosion is like roughly equal to the output that you did with your weapon to cause the explosion. So it's almost like you're doing double damage with Volatile. Never mind the fact that it has an area of effect uh, as well, so like it just blows up everything around it. So yeah, I'd say get rid of that 35% damage buff, that's kind of nuts. I don't know why why they include it, like Volatile is good enough, it does everything. It does damage to big targets and it specializes heavily at ad clear. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to say is now, uh, now I, so I came up with a different build for Jeff Falcons, like day one as soon as the season started. Um, I wanted to see what I was going to do for it, and uh, b because I'm using Stylish Executioner, which is basically a must to keep that time on vault rounds, now, now I've got four fragment slots instead of three, right, which you get, you get two from Vanishing Step, two from Stylish Executioner, and you only get one from uh, Quick Fall. Um, and quick fall is a very good aspect, don't get me wrong, but if you're going to use your falcons, you need stylish executioner. So you either give up vanishing step or you give up quick fall. To me, it makes more sense to give up quick fall because four fragments are better than three. And vanishing step basically does the same thing as quick fall anyway. Um, you know, yes, quick fall. Um, you can make your teammates invis, which is a good support role, but if you're solo, that doesn't matter. Um, and yes, quick fall applies the smoke bomb void debuff. But if you have vanishing step, then you can just throw your smoke grenade. You don't have to consume it with the charged melee, like just, or you don't have to consume it. Yeah. You don't have to consume it with quick fall. You could just do two, two motions instead of one. Really, not a big deal. For a whole extra fragment, it's worth it. Uh, so, so the idea here isn't to get invisible invis uh, uptime. You don't want to have like long duration of invisibility. You want to have. You want to have. You want to be able to go in and out of invis frequently. Like you don't play this this type of night stalker build is not like an assassin like you know stay in viz for 20 seconds and you know evade the fight run and hide no it's like just it's it's almost like the invisibility doesn't even matter because you're just constant you're shooting no matter what if you want you can capitalize on the invis and take a you know five seconds of respite and get your recovery back and get to a better position get out of a sticky situation yes it has that benefit but mainly you just want to be flashing in and out of invis so that you can constantly refresh your vault rounds right so i have 100 mobility so i can start the whole cycle with just dodging into invis i'm also using the fragment um, the finisher fragment that makes you invis, so when I finish an enemy I get invisibility. I don't know if that's really super necessary. could probably swap that out for something else if you want. But basically, what, as, soo as soon as you get the cycle going, then Stylish Executioner does all the rest of the work. Um, on top of that, I'm using, you know, I got the smoke bomb so I can weaken enemies. Uh, so I don't even need to dodge into invis first. I could just like throw a smoke bomb, kill the debuff target, and then I get invis that way. I'm also using suppressor grenades. Um, so any enemies that I kill from my grenade make me invis right away because suppression counts as a void debuff. So I have all the void debuffs possible to get invisibility from Stylish Executioner and uh, Vault Arounds from your falcons um, and I'm running so I'm running 100 mobility so I could have my invis or my dodge whenever I need it because not only is it making me invis but it's also uh, just to reload my weapons which I come to find out I barely had to do because I'm using this commemoration which I've never had one before until I did uh, Deep Stone Crypt 
I've done it a few times already this season because the weapons are craftable. Um, I hadn't done the raid before, so this gives me a, a great reason to go in there and, and do it. It's pretty popular right now. Weapons are awesome. I, I, I don't have much in my arsenal as far as void heavy weapons. I didn't even have a void machine gun before uh, before the season started. And so and now we got the retrofit escapade from the uh, from the exoframe, the seraphic weapon, which is also really good. And even for a 900 RPM, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, it feels really good. Like I have one with stats for all, one for all. I haven't crafted it yet, but it's just a random roll. And the uh, it's pretty nuts. Like I was doing King's Fall Totem, and I kept with your Falcons, and I kept going back to the center plate with like 24 plus stacks of Death Singer's power without even really trying. Like not even using up the timer. Like we were just <clears throat> next person would grab for me as soon as they got there. I sometimes would have five, ten seconds left on the clock, and I just always had more than 20 Death Singer's power from that machine gun and your Falcons of volatile rounds, which is nuts. Uh, but here I'm using Commemoration, uh, which I really, really like. I like the slow firing, heavy hitting machine guns the best. And this one has like super high stability, very accurate. Um, and so you've seen so far like what what it's capable of doing to adds with your Falcon's Hauberk. It's pretty nutty, pretty nuts. Um, and the role I have on it is reconstruction with killing tally. And I put backup mag on there just to see what would happen. This is the first time I really used this machine gun is in this run. I didn't realize I, I was getting with reconstruction I'd be able to get up to 150 rounds of the mag, which is crazy. So I definitely didn't need to use my my dodge to reload my weapons. I don't think I reloaded commemoration once this whole strike. Um, I may have done it while I was dodging, just kind of uh, coincidentally, but you don't need to because it, re it, it rebuilds the ammo, the mag, just like no matter what, whether it's stowed or whether, whether it's out, it's just always reloading itself. Which I, I'm assuming helps with killing tally big time because killing tally um, is one of those damage perks that depends on your weapon being out and fully loaded, right? Or because as soon as you reload or put your put it away, then you lose your killing tally stacks. So if you get up like five stacks of killing tally, then you're doing I don't know what the numbers are, maybe 30% more damage, something like that. I'd imagine it's 20 to 35 in like most of the high high damage weapon perks. Um, so I just got one stack of killing tally for killing the champion. So the play there, if I really wanted to use the machine gun to do max damage, would be to kill a few adds first and then focus the uh, focus the big guy. So I think I'd do that on the boss here a few times. Um, but yeah, so I, I didn't finish what I was going to say about the build. Um, but I, I went with Devour because... Killing stuff uh, will refresh your devour timer. So, and the devour timer is about nine seconds or so as well. So it's the same as vault rounds. So you can basically keep them going side by side. So every time you get a vault or kill, uh, you go invis and you get healing from devour. You get grenade energy all that. Um, it's the fragment uh, for, I think it's Echo of Starvation, right? So you pick up an Orb of Power. I'm using Harmonic Siphon, obviously, because I'm using the Monarch and Commemoration. I'm making, you know, it's all void weapon damage, so there's orbs everywhere for me to pick up. There also, I also, here, here's a, an important part of it, is you gotta put Taking Charge on or some other specific mod so that you can pick up the orbs of power. Because if your super is full, you're not gonna be able to pick up the orbs, like it won't do anything. So it means there's no point running that devour fragment if uh, if you don't have another way to pick up orbs. So taking charge actually fixes that issue. I wish 
Bungie would fix it because it shouldn't be like that. Uh, but that is a little... I actually just learned this not that long ago uh, from somebody commenting on a video or, or a discussion online somewhere. Because I had previously thought the only way to do it was if you had a rocket launcher that that had explosive light, or uh, Star Eater scales with you know feast of light, like those override your super and will let you pick up orbs. But no, apparently it also works with taking charge, which costs three energy. Uh, you could put it on any one of your armor pieces. Cause it's a combat style mod, um, and. Uh, so, so taking charge is letting me pick up the orbs no matter what, whether my super is full or not. It's also charging me with light. And I'm using high energy fire. And I'm using elemental armaments to produce void wells. And font of might. So, normally, normally it's a good idea if you're going to do a well build to just use elemental charge, right? If you're gonna like, if you're gonna use wells to get charged with light, it's a good way to do it. Just use elemental charge, pick up a well, you get two stacks of charge with light. I realize that, but I'm using powerful friends to get my mobility to tier 10. So I only had four combat slots, combat mod slots. So I went taking charge, high energy fire, right? So orbs get me high energy fire, wells get me font of might. That's it. But uh, I'm using Elemental Armaments and Harmonic Siphon. Those work hand in hand, right? So no matter what, my Void Weapon is going to be producing both, roughly around the same time. So wherever, wherever I see an Orb of Power, guaranteed there's a Void Well is not going to be far from it. It'll likely be right next to it, uh, or, it'll be, or it'll be one produced like shortly. So basically I can keep constant uptime on Devour, Font of Might, High Energy Fire, um, and Vault Rims. So I'm getting those four buffs. And High Energy Fire stacks with Font of Might, so you're stacking a 20% uh, damage buff with a 25% damage buff. So, like overall, it multipli multiplicatively, it probably does like 40% or something extra damage, which is which is really good. Um, Normally I wouldn't stack so many, like it's maybe overkill, maybe not for Grandmasters, uh, but a lot of times with my combat map mods I'll do like one damage combat mod and then one survive, like survivability type combat mod. So usually something like striking light so you get extra damage resistance while you're sprinting or well of life to get some healing from solar wells. Even Well of Tenacity, so Void Wells gives you damage resistance. I said screw it, I'm a hunter, I can go invis when I want. Just by dodging, uh, or just by finishing an enemy, or just by proccing Stylish Executioner. So, 5 seconds of invis is plenty of time to... Uh, plenty of time to survive, basically. I mean, you, you can obviously die while you're invis, super easy, like if you're up against a wall and the tart and the enemy thinks you're, like, where you decide to go invis, the enemy's gonna think you're still there, so if you're not quick enough to get out of that spot where you decided to go invis, then your bullets are still gonna be going that way. So it's, it's easy to die while you're invis too, but, um, but in general, like, just make sure when you go invis that you move to a new position, or go invis when you're out of out of line of sight of the enemy, right? <clears throat> so I, um, other than that, there's we have a whole bunch of artifact mods this season, like solo operative, weakened clear. Those seem to be the most popular for solo stuff. Uh, well, I don't need weak and clear at all because I got smoke bombs, um, and they're refreshed pretty fast. And quite frankly, I didn't feel like using Wither Horde. Whenever I see like everybody's using the same weapon, it kind of turns me off of that weapon. So I love Wither Horde, 
but all I've seen so far this season is people using Wither Horde. Um, so I, I don't feel like using Wither Horde now. <laughs> so I'm using the Monarch, which is ironic because last season everybody was using the Monarch. I used it a fair bit of amount too, but, it, but I was even turned off of it while I was using it. But at least this this season, I don't see anybody else really using it. Uh, it's still a it's still a great bow. Like it's nothing's changed about it. It's still stunning overloads. It's still doing poison tick damage. It's still an exotic primary. Um, and bows are like one of the best weapons overall in PVE, just for survivability, target acquisition, the aim assist on them, the damage. Like you can strafe in and out of cover, pop shots. Like you never have to just put yourself out there and enemy fire to do damage to them, you can just strafe in and out with a bow. Uh, so the Monarch is still very good. Uh, and I'm sure people won't forget it once they get over the fact that oh, Wither Horde and Weak and Clear is, is so good. Yeah, it is good, but you, d you don't need it if, you, if you're on Void and you've got Void debuffs. As far as I know, they don't stack. So Weak and Clear is a 15% debuff. So is a smoke bomb, so is echo of undermining on your grenades. Those are also 15%. So they don't stack. It's just one or the other. So yeah, with Wither Horde you might be able to apply weakened clear the weakened effect more often. Uh, but who cares? Like you got you got smoke bombs, echo of undermining, if you're using it, I'm not. Um, tether, 30% debuff, so that's better than weak and clear. Um, so yeah anyways that's this week's run I got lots to talk about obviously uh, I'll probably be doing the ghosts here coming up soon and talk about some more stuff leave me a comment let me know what you think um, hope you're enjoying the holidays I'll see you in the next one